Hello everyone and welcome to Mog's Workshop. Today we're going to be building a kit. What kind of kit? Well, a very tiny, tiny kit full of lots of very small little parts. Great fun though. First thing we're going to do is check out these resistors. They will come in a big mess so we need to figure out which one's which. Get out the multimeter here and run it across the probes. And then we can see which resistor is producing which kind of resistance. Very handy when you've got a billion of them. Must sort them out. Must get them all into the right place. Put the wrong one in the wrong place and bang! Puff of smoke, all of it in the bin. Yeah, and wouldn't that be terribly distressing? So let's try and avoid that. So what's this project going to involve? An awful lot of soldering. And soldering something I'm really trying very hard to get better at. So what we're going to see here is someone, i.e. me, stumbling through and bending resistors and all kinds of other components, sticking them in holes and then prod, prod, prodding. Hopefully getting the solder in the right place and not making a terrible garbage mess of the whole of the back of the thing, because then it'll short out and go, fucked. When really what I wanted to do is go, bring, and start working. Hmm, look at all of this. That actually looks quite neat. Uh, the back's not quite so good, but anyway, let's not focus on that for now. Let's keep going. Putting on these potentiometers here, great big chunky fellows, but they go on easy enough. And oddly enough, sometimes it's the big components that actually cause a bit more trouble because their feet are so large you need a large amount of solder to hold them in place. Whereas these little things like this integrated circuit holder, well, they're tiny and they're quite good fun. And then you take a tiny little splodge of solder, poke, 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 and then they'll hold in place. Look at this. Looks like a miniature city. Wonderful stuff pushing the IC in place, and there we are. Now all it needs is these little hats for its potentiometers. These are quite jolly. Put these in place, and we're almost there. Give them a good squeeze, make sure everything still rotates. Oh dear, dropped it there. Never mind, made of robust stuff. Not going to get damaged it that way. Here we go, twisty twisty, twisty twisty, and lovely. Job's a good one. What's next? Oh, okay, it needs a box, does it? Okay, well, luckily the kit comes with this wonderful, rather acrylic, shiny thing. Remove the paper and you've got lovely little see-through plastic parts. Little bit of screwing these hand nuts in place. And before you know it, you're assembling a little three-dimensional case for your wonderful little box. What does this box do, by the way? Well, it does something rather special. It produces waveforms of different kinds when plugged into another type of kit. Let's have a look at that other type of kit now. Mm, it's going to require a lot more soldering, so I hear. Bingo! There it is. Look at that. What a wonderful collection of parts. Don't know what that thing is. We'll figure it out later. Look at this. What a rather lovely ruby red circuit board. Putting in this tiny little fellow was a bear, I can tell you, but actually not too bad. Just requires a fine touch. Ooh, lumpy solder there. Must improve that technique. But still, it sticks and it might work. Ooh, my first time working with these little chaps. Look at this. They're so incredibly tiny. Surface mounted resistors. Utterly missing. Minuscule, lovely packaging though. How do we attach them? Well, we just put one little blob of solder on the board first, hold the little guy in place, and then finish off with a blob on the other side. Tricky stuff, and therefore a tremendous relief that this kit also had normal regular sized resistors, because these are much easier. So here we go, labeling them up, and there really are an awful lot of them in all kinds of massively, massively different numbers. 100k first. Normal process here, we'll take them, we'll bend their little feet, and we'll solder them in place, one by one, and my word, there's an awful lot of them, all doing different and clever things, I shouldn't imagine. Look at this, two million? What on earth is it resisting? Well, and an awful lot, I should think, at two million. So we put them in sequentially, so we are putting them in in the right order. Put them in in the wrong order, you'll have to lean across ones that are already there in order to put the ones in that aren't there yet. And that'll mean you'll start burning things accidentally with the end of your soldering iron, and that will be tedious. So we don't want that. We'll follow the instructions step by step, and then we'll have done all the resistors. And now it's time for transistors and all kinds of other isters. There really are quite a lot of fun parts in this kit. So that means an an awful lot of these things. These are the legs you cut off each component. I like to keep these in a little plastic pot because you never know when they'll come in useful. A terribly handy and very neat way of making your own circuits. So after putting the quartz timing chip in place and making sure it's all fine, it's time for these lovely butons. These are momentary switches, they just fill the holes there, put their little feet through, and then we bend them back to hold them in place, and then solder them in one by one. 
Yeah, lovely, satisfying, clickety-clack. So let's blast them all in, shall we? One after the other. Here we go, I'm lightning speed now, getting them all in place, because they're all exactly the same. An identical method is used for putting each of them in, bending the feet one by one, and then putting in the solder one by one. And each of these is going to perform a different function according to whatever the IC says they should do. So let's find out what that function is. One by one, nice and easy. A little test just to make sure we haven't melted any of them. Perfect. Ooh, a bevy of tiny tangerines have appeared. What are these fellows? Well, these are little capacitors. No need to sort them out, they have their names printed on them. That's useful. So, just like the resistors, we'll put them in one by one, making sure to put them in the right order, because some are bigger than others. Some are tiny, in fact, have little tiny little orange heads, and some are huge and have great big huge orange heads, and they'll bump into each other and you if you're trying to put them in in the wrong order. So, we'll take our time and be methodical and meditative in our approach, and before you know it, they're all in place. So, it's time for some other little components here. These are jolly, they've got three feet, and sit up rather nicely for you to solder them in place. Not many parts left to put in, I should think. What's next? Let's have a little look at our list. So, now onwards to some real chunky capacitors, not like our little orange chaps. These ones here are quite hefty. Really nice to put in though. Look at that, they look brilliant once they're in. Really add to the circuit board's appeal. This is tremendously helpful because if it doesn't work, at least it'll look nice. These will help it work though. These are the selector switches. These enable us to move between modes and they are very nice solid pieces of kit. Getting these in place involves soldering down lots more tiny little feet. A little bit more fiddly than the momentary switches, but once they're in place, they should do the job wonderfully. Oh, I do hope it works. Oh, I like to do this. Look at this, a lovely screen. It comes with its own screen, Joy. Let's open this little chap up and see what's going on. Yeah, it's not a touch screen or anything, but should look rather spiffing. Just goes with these connectors here. Oh, but first we need to do something rather weird. We need to create a test loop. And we do that by taking a piece of metal, one of the legs we cut off and put inside our little plastic pot earlier. We bend it around this cocktail stick and then we solder it in place in this special area. Area. When connecting the probes to this, it will give us a predictable calibration tone. Most useful. Last, back to our splendid screen. Now we're going to solder this in place by putting the little connectors in on the breadboard, propping up one end with a pair of snippers, and then we'll solder, solder, solder all of the tiny pins. All marvellously, tremendously satisfying. And you know what else is tremendously satisfying? When you turn it on and it doesn't explode into a tiny million mega fragments all up in your face, yo. No, this one worked perfectly and all we need to do now is to squeeze the little board in place, making sure not to snap it in half, and we're ready to see if it can actually do what it's supposed to do. Let's find out after the big reveal. Oh, you can't rush that super stuff. Here we go. Does it work? Well, it powers on. <gasps> Good heavens above. It's booting up. This is tremendously exciting. Little interface there. Now, grabbing the probe with one finger and a thumb, we can see that it does indeed seem to be registering some kind of input. Let's turn the lights out. Ooh, space age stuff. Yes, look at this, we've upped the sensitivity and now it is most definitely recognizing that I am squeezing it. Some kind of truth device could perhaps be manufactured from this. That's a thought. Anyway, right now what we need to do is create the box. And this is very much like the box for the little tiny box, but this is a bigger box. First of all, we peel off the paper from this super acrylic, and then we put it all together in a step-by-step -step fashion. It's all really rather simple and splendid. Twisty-twisty on these little bolts here, making sure that they are nice and firm so we can put the circuit board upon them and hold it all in place. Then the other elements of the case go on one by one all around it, making a nice firm box within which the screen will sit. The screen is also held in place by a separate piece of acrylic which has slots cut out for it for all of the little buttons and switches. It's really rather super to put together and nice and easy. Not to mention strong and of course you can take it apart, which is terribly handy if the whole thing doesn't work once you've spent all this time screwing it in place. Now what we've got here are little extenders for the buttons. These are 
dreadfully clever. Just little bits of plastic that we put in place and turn the button's rather boring little black plastic into rather jolly red plastic. Secure these bolts and we have a plastic sandwich. Time to enjoy our ludicrously wonderful oscilloscope.